Hey, what's up friends? Aaron from Unison here today. I just had a quick video I wanted to share with you all. Um, just a few tips that I thought could be helpful to speed up workflow. You know, when you're making music, you don't want to go digging for things and, you know, like, like, going and like re-adding things that you might typically use, things like that, just things that will help speed up your workflow and just keep you in the zone when you're making music. So I have 10 tips for you today. Let's go ahead and jump into the first one now. All right, so tip number one is using favorites. I have them set up here as go-tos. And so basically what these are is these are collections and you can kind of basically assign different sounds or synths or racks, presets, whatever it might be. And you can assign them all to these different collections here. And you can click this edit button. You can add more if you need more and um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I just use basically these two right here. I have go-tos, which are kind of just like things that um, I might go and grab and use frequently. And I have this one here, which is to use. And so these are things that maybe might've inspired me. And I'm like, oh, I wanna use that in an idea or a song later. So then, you know, if I wanted to go and add one, all I, all I gotta do is um, I'm just gonna go over here to my instrument racks. I have a bunch here and say, I like a certain one and I just right click and then I have all the different collections here and I can just choose, say this one. And then if I go over to my go to's now, you'll see it's right there and then I can just drag it and use it. And it's really nice just having everything that you use frequently in one spot. So that way you know you're not digging for it all the time. It's just all in one spot and you have all of your favorite sounds and presets and all that stuff right here. Tip number two is going to be using default sets and templates. Um, I feel like they kind of go hand in hand, so I'm going to cover both in this tip. And so essentially, you know, when you first open up Ableton, um, it's just an empty set like this, you know, nothing super inspiring or anything like that. It, it's just two empty mini tracks and two empty audio tracks. And so what I feel is nice is to, you know, have your own default set. And what I mean by that is when you open up Ableton, you can have a bunch of stuff ready to go um, that you might typically use. So I'll go ahead and make one now. Um, so what I might do is maybe I'll throw Serum on this MIDI track and then um, you can also choose like a preset if you want to start with like a default preset. Um, I'm not going to do that for this particular example, but you can also save, you know, Serum presets or, or, or any synth really. Um, and then it'll just open up with all the settings in Serum, whatever synth you're using, etc. And then additionally, I might go ahead and add a compressor as well as an EQ8. And I typically go ahead and, and do that with all my channels. So I might just go ahead and may like, you know, like have like a few more audio channels. And then um, I'm gonna copy the EQ8 and the compressor over to all of these. So what I do is I hold down shift, highlight that and highlight that. So that way they're both highlighted and then just copy them by hitting Control c or Command-C on Mac, and then go over to each of these channels, and I just paste each of them. And so now everything that um, I might start out working with um, will have all these effects, and then once I'm done, I can just go up here to the File menu, and then just do Save Live Set as Default Set, and then as you can see here, I have a couple others, but I'll just do Aaron's default. And so now I have that there. And then if I just hit new live set and hit no, then it will open and everything is there ready for me to go. Um, and then additionally, I can save out a couple of different versions here. Like as you can see, I have some other ones and these are all just different various templates. So depending on the style of music I'm working on, or if I'm working on something for a client, um, depending on what it might be that I'm doing, I can go and just set up different templates for what I uh, might need. Tip number three is setting default tracks. Now this kind of ties in with the last tip that I just gave, but essentially you can go over here uh, to a track and I can just right click and I can go ahead and do save as default audio track. And so if I do that, it's gonna uh, overwrite. I just hit yes. And then now whenever I make a new track, if I just hit Control T or Command T, 
then I do a new track and it has, you know, both of these plugins here. And so, you know, say I wanted to add like, um, like a delay or something, I'll throw like a delay. And again, just right click, save as default, yes. And then each time I make a new track, it's going to have all of these plugins here ready for me to go instead of me additionally adding them each and every time. Tip number four is using Ableton racks. And this is extremely helpful when it comes to, you know, say you have a bunch of processing that's going on and you have like uh, this, this cool preset inside of a synth or even it's just like a huge processing chain and you're like, okay, I don't want to go and rebuild this every time. Then you can just go and save it as an Ableton rack and you can just drop it onto anything and it's super easy. So for example, I have some processing here on this channel and I like everything that I did here. So I want to go ahead and save it as a rack. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just hold down shift and highlight everything. And then I can hit control G or command G on Mac and it will group everything. So that way, you know, everything is together. So now I just go ahead and hit this uh, little floppy disk icon here. And now it's saving a audio effect rack. I can go ahead and name it as whatever. Aaron's effect rack and then now I have it right there in the effect racks I can go ahead and delete this and then I can just drag it and then there we go I have everything and it's ready to go for me tip number five and this is a big one for me is using shortcuts using shortcuts is going to hugely shave off a lot of time wasted when you're you know working on music and I feel that they extremely help. And so, you know, being able to do that, you can kind of lay out ideas quicker, you can access things quicker, and just like make music and focus less on all of like just navigating around in Ableton. And so if you don't know them, um, there's two different resources that I think are great when it comes to trying to figure them all out. There is this first thing here, which is this, um, it's like a, a keyboard cover and it has all of the shortcuts um, associated with each key. And these are specific to Ableton. And so you can buy it, as you can see, it's 30 bucks here and you can just drop it onto your keyboard and it just lines everything up and it's great. Um, and then the other thing is just here on the Ableton's website, there's this page here that has all of the shortcuts for everything. And they're all kind of grouped together for specific tasks and things like that. And I think that's super nice to have as well. Um, there'll be a link for both of these down in the description below. So that way you can go and access them if you want to check both of these out. Hey everyone, just wanted to pause this video real quick and let you know that Unison just released their Beatmaker Blueprint Pack. Um, there is a free taster pack of it that you can grab on the Unison's website for free now. Um, the sounds that I did use in today's demo do come from that pack, so be sure to check it out. All right, let's get back into the video. Tip number six is freezing tracks. And by freezing tracks, what it basically does is say you have a project that's running kind of slow. They have like a lot of plugins in there and it's just lagging a bit and you're like, What's going on? Well, what you can do is go and freeze a track or multiple tracks. And by doing that, it will hugely save CPU. So I have here this channel that I want to go ahead and freeze. Um, this plugin here, Omnisphere, is usually pretty CPU heavy. So I'm just going to go ahead and freeze it just so that way I don't run into any future issues. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click on the channel, choose freeze track, and that's going to go ahead and freeze it. And then once it's done, then there's a couple options that we can do here. I can go ahead and what I like to do is just go ahead and make a new audio track. Um, if you don't remember, that's Control T or Command T on Mac. And then I just highlight everything by holding down the Shift key and just highlight. And then I'll hold down the Control key and then I can drag it down to a new audio channel. And so now I have the original frozen audio here in case I want to go ahead and unfreeze it and make any changes to say the synth or the processing chain, anything like that, I have that right here. And then I can just turn this off for now. And I have the bounce audio right here in a separate uh, channel that will actually play in the project itself. Now, additionally, if you don't care about that, you're like, I'm fine with how it is, um, then you can go ahead and just right click again and choose flatten track. 
and that will get rid of you know the any VSTs, any processing things like that, and you only have the audio here, and that can also save CPU even more because there's you know that VST or whatever plugin you might be using is gone from the project. So uh, you can try both of these methods, but personally, I like the first because then I can go back and make changes if I need to. Tip number seven is using an inspiration or a jumping points folder. And so earlier when I was talking about collections, I kind of grazed over this. Um, if we look here, I have this to use section. And so all this is, is just, just a bunch of uh, like loops and other samples that I have heard that I'm like, oh, I have an idea for this. It doesn't work for what I'm working on right now, but um, I wanna make an idea with the sound later. And so I usually will go and tag them in here, or you can also make like a folder over here in the places and just have a big folder of say like, um, know kicks or loops or uh, melodies you know whatever it might be a drum loop anything like that um, and so you know you can make a custom folder of stuff to kind of have jumping points for when you are just feeling stuck and you're not sure what to do tip number eight is having a custom pack of sounds or just favorites and so like I mentioned previously I have my go-to's but if we look back here, it can get a little messy. So I find it a bit easier to use something like a folder um, and just kind of organizing everything to, to like, okay, maybe your favorite kicks, maybe your favorite snares, favorite uh, risers, hats, etc. you know, all that stuff. And so for me personally, I have a folder here that is just a pack of a bunch of stuff that I've made that are my go-tos that I'll all use. And so as you can see here, I have like one shots, like bass kick, miscellaneous, perk snare, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, And then a bunch of loops that I've made as well to where it's like, oh, okay, I, uh, again, going back to the inspiration folder, I'm feeling stuck. I can just go in here and choose a loop and kind of use that as a jumping point as well. But having um, a favorites folder or even just, again, this go-to's, you know, something like that, where you just have everything organized nicely instead of like how I have, I have yet to do this still, but I have this huge sample library of a bunch of different packs that I've grabbed over the years that I have not gone and organized. So usually when I'm trying to find something, like say if I want to search for a kick, I would type in kick and I would just go to all results. And so, you know, there's just like this endless amount of kicks. And so definitely good to have like a favorites folder with all your favorite kicks or just kicks that you know are good and um, you're not spending a bunch of time looking through a bunch of really bad kicks like as I might do here. Tip number nine is gonna be separating your sessions into sketch sessions and then fine tuning sessions. And so what I mean by that is when I'm making music, usually the first session or the first pass, whatever it might be, is gonna be where I go and sketch out an idea. And I'm not thinking too much about the mix. I'm not thinking too much about like the nitpicky details, things like that. I'm just kind of laying out the idea. I'm going with like my gut feeling, what feels right to me. Um, it's called flow state when you're just really in the zone and you're just going, 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 and you don't want to break out of that flow state and lose the inspiration. So I don't focus too much on details or anything like that in that session. I'm just like, let's just get the idea out. Let's just hash it out and I can come back and replace things or like fine tune things later. So I might go and maybe like start with some loops to kind of get like an idea. And then later I might be like, okay, that loop was a good idea, but I want to make my own thing. So now let's go ahead and like write some chords to this loop. Um, or maybe like replace a drum loop, for example, with like my own drums. And then that's when I can kind of like sit there and redo things and make it all nice and pretty and things like that. Now, I will say this may not work for everyone. Um, you know, some people just like to do everything in one session and obviously there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel it works for me and I end up making a lot more better ideas when I'm not losing 
um, the flow state and then I'm just stuck with like a bunch of loops or like half finished ideas because I lost inspiration halfway through. So try that out. Um, you know, try just doing a sketch session, a fine tune session, and then um, as a final session, you know, if, if you mix your own music, make the last session your mix session. Tip number 10 is going to be just organization and you know all of these tips have kind of covered organization in a way but um, as additionally by organizing your projects themselves and that can be you know such a small thing as like organizing your actual projects on your computer so for example here if i go to where all my projects are stored i have them all stored like this by year and then by month so then I can go and find them. Um, additionally, something else that you could do is uh, in the actual projects themselves, you could go and put maybe like the BPM in there and the key as well. I, I don't do this. I need to do a better job of doing this, but by adding the that in there, you can get an idea of like BPM of your projects, um, the key of your projects. So that way if you're like, oh, um, I'm looking for a specific one. It was around this BPM. That's a great way of finding things out. Um, and also just knowing which projects are the newest, which ones you made during which month, etc. cetera. Um, I think by organizing everything like this hugely helps in terms of finding projects, especially when you have hundreds, if not thousands, like I do. Additionally, also organizing your actual Ableton projects like so by going and grouping elements. Groups is a huge thing so that definitely help to kind of organize everything and keep them all in one place so that way you know where um, something is if you're looking for a specific element and also using locators like how I have here. So you know where certain sections are in a song. You're not going in like digging around being like, oh, where is it, where is it, where is it? You know exactly where it is based on these markers right here. And so all of this will help you to navigate your projects easier and to go and make music more quicker so you're spending less time doing the nitty gritty stuff and just spending more time making music. I hope you take something away from this video. If you have any additional tips as well, please drop a comment below. If you like today's video, consider subscribing to the channel and leave a thumbs up on this video. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.